Recently, the British Film Institute celebrated 75 years of the public information films of Britain. The Central Office of Information, which sounds a bit ingsoc, produced and distributed thousands of films for use across Britain, the Commonwealth and the world. They were paid for by the British taxpayers and they covered everything from drama to documentary to comedy, animation and even horror. These films were created to keep Britain safe, educated and informed. Interestingly, we stopped making them in 2012. I guess we didn't need the guidance anymore. Lorry driver shortage. Fuel shortage. Dock is becoming a bit of an issue. Going bust at an alarming rate. This documentary is called How to Use the Telephone. Now, the telephone had been around for about 72 years before this film came along. How did people not have the hang of it yet? The 19 minute video spends the first 12 minutes on sketches where people are having frustrations with the telephone, calling the operator and not knowing what extension they need, calling someone and they're not in, or waiting your turn at the phone booth. There's something so British about taking two thirds of the screen time and using it to complain. This guy's about to use the telephone right. He's got it mastered. Look at him rotating that dial. And smoking. Not only is he cool, but he multitasks. I'm sorry, there's no time for one too. They still aren't getting through to who they want. What is this video? I think you should have a word with Mr. Parkins. Parkins? I've been trying to get him for days. I don't believe he exists. <laughs> well, I think I know where to find him. That guy's fake laugh is so relatable. <laughs> Using the telephone is not a complicated operation. <laughs> I've just realised something. This guy's phone doesn't have numbers, it has letters. What is being dialed when he turns the wheel? Like, how do you get the letter that you want? I understand how this works on like a Nokia, but a rotary? Otherwise there might be considerable delay. Would you mind holding on a moment? There's a call on the other phone. One of their solutions to phone frustration is to have multiple phones. I really like the acting in this one. It was extremely convincing. It was cut exactly like movies from the 50s were cut. So production value, very strong. Did it inform me? I felt really confused most of the time because this was supposed to be a video about how to use the telephone and it ended up being 12 minutes of how not to use the telephone, followed by a few examples that still weren't perfect. The narrator was like, we're almost there, but we're not quite. Just show me how to use the phone. And I still didn't really learn either at the end of this. How do you take care of your kid? This is kind of a documentary, but also a little bit of a drama. I just found it so entertaining that I had to talk about it. It's for post-war parents who don't know how to raise kids. The boy demands attention because he has at last learned to do a pretty difficult thing. If only you could feel as intensely pleased about it as he does. He's taken five years to learn to do this. That kid is about five years old. Like, I don't think it's fair to say that it took him five years to learn. He didn't come out the womb like, right, where's the gramophone? Of course, in a way you are very proud of him, but it's difficult to look happy at the moment. Why are they being so weird about this? They own a gramophone. The kid put music on. I... What's the problem? They're acting like he's doing something illegal. I am dying at the condescension from the voiceover artist as well. No, the answer, if only you'd thought of it, might have been to divert his interest to another thing he's learned to do. The very thing you want to be at. Gardening. But you didn't think of it, and so the potatoes have to wait. Okay, in this part, the narrator is trying to describe how adults are better at identifying objects than children are. Yes, that's fair. But their example of an everyday object is a bagpipe reed. Why doesn't he just use his eyes? Well, our sight has had a good many more years of experience than his. We can associate one thing with another. Yes, of course, it's a bagpipe's reed. 
Now I'm Scottish and I wouldn't look at a piece of wood on the ground and think, ah yes, a bagpipe reed. Maybe they were more of a common household item in the 50s. T I M Here we are again with the letters on the phone. So did you like, was your number based on a three letter word? Like, if you wanted to call me, would you dial 274? That can't be real. She won't get paid. Ask her mother. Oh, I expect I used to do the same thing. This hasn't aged well. We also have Never Go With Strangers, which is from 1971. This apparently caused so much distress that it was held from airing on TV for years and was only allowed to be viewed under responsible adult supervision. To be honest, you're the responsible adult here supervising this viewing right now. You can see that Janet is hesitating. And the man can see it too. So he goes on talking nicely to her. You know that little field just off the road? Well, there's a sweet little baby donkey there. A sweet little baby donkey. I would be getting in that car. Everything he said is a lie. But Janet doesn't know this. There's not even a baby donkey in the field. There's not even a baby donkey. The cows judge you. I really like this visual effect. Come and look at my puppies. You'll love them. Whatever they say, always say no thank you and walk away. No thank you. Make sure you thank them when you say no. You wouldn't want to be impolite to a predator. If a man looked awful, if his face changed when he was doing something bad, This is my mum's favourite, probably because it reminds her of face ache. Seven. Eight. Charlie says that if ever you see a box of matches lying around, tell mummy because they can hurt you. The whole idea of Charlie playing with this little boy and then protecting him from danger is so cute. And this is exactly how my cat sounds. Then this man came up and said, would I like to see some puppies? Stranger Danger was a really big part of 70s Britain. And I said yes. We cat abandoning puppy simp. And even after being abandoned for puppies, Charlie still swoops into the rescue. What a hero. My name is Old Nick O'Teen. Old Nicotine! Yes, I am staying for the puns. I love the creativity in this scene. When he's deciding what, like, cigarettes to buy, they have names like popularity and self-confidence, but then he looks again and they have names like lung cancer and heart disease. I think I like it because it's about how marketing lies to you. It's just so ahead of its time. Also, the teenager is animated with, like, big, goofy features, and the doctor is animated all suave and sophisticated, really subliminally channeling this message. Right, I know this is about smoking, but a stranger literally just pulled up in a car and picked up this kid. Did we learn nothing from before? So the horror public information films are the ones that have stayed with me the most. They are terrifying. In fact, they are so distressing that I'm going to put a warning on the screen just now and also I think that you should skip ahead to this time if you don't want to see it. And I'm not just being overcautious. They are truly disturbing. They're not just soft horror. There are some really, really horrific things in these public information films. This is a film called Searching. Jimmy! 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 Jimmy!
Please keep matches away from children. I mean, the visual was harrowing enough. And then they have this echo of the family calling out to each other. This actually won a Venice Golden Lion and a Hollywood Spike trophy. Absolutely terrifying. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Every time. Oh. Hi! <laughs> yeah! The War Game is a pseudo-documentary from 1966 designed to explore the effects of a nuclear attack on Britain. It was deemed too horrifying to be broadcast and was only viewable by private screening. Until the 80s when they were like, ah, it's fine, just traumatise Britain. I was gonna do like a clip, like on its own, that you could just watch, but I think I'll just let you look it up if you want to. It's really distressing and I don't want to edit it into my video. It won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature in 1967, and I can see why. Similarly, the TV show Threads visited the nuclear war scenario in Britain in 1984. Interesting choice of year. Threads won four BAFTAs and was notable for how it made people feel. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian said, It wasn't until I saw Threads that I found that something on screen could make me break out in a cold, shivering sweat and keep me in that condition for 20 minutes, followed by weeks of depression and anxiety. And movie magazine Little White Lies made this, obser love that. Made this observation. The film paints a nightmarish picture of a Briton woefully unprepared for what is coming and reduced, when it does come, to isolation, collapse and medieval regression with a failed health service, very little food being harvested, mass homelessness and the pound and the penny losing all value. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my analysis. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more. And if you know anyone who would enjoy this content, share it with them. Create an info video telling people how good this video is so that they come and watch it. Yeah, it's a simple one this week. No need to complicate it. But however you want to share it is fine. See you next time.